What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode six. This video, we're going to be talking about an alternative way to get input from the user using get char. This is a function and it does exactly what it sounds like. It gets a character from the user. So although the way we currently have things works, I just wanted to introduce an alternative. So we are going to call a function get char and then we will assign the result of this to a variable response. So this is what it's going to look like. We don't have to pass in anything to get char, but it will return the character. So if we wanted to store this as a char, we would no longer need to say response index zero. We would just get that first character. So we'll remove the uh, indexing there and run this. And we can say why, and you can see it works the way we would expect. I also wanted to talk about the interesting relationship between characters and integers. So we could actually, instead of saying char here, say int. And let's go ahead and run this. You can see it compiles fine. Do you want to play a game? We say why for yes. And it says you entered 121. Let's play a game then. What is going on? How is y121 and how does this work even though we have this as a number? When we're comparing this to y, you would think 121 would fail and this would be false. Well, there's actually an association between integers and characters and you can find this in an ASCII table. So let's go ahead and take a look at an ASCII table. You can see that here. Well, this isn't an ASCII table, but this is the sponsor of our series. It's the IDE we've been using. It can do so much more than what we've been using it for, including visual editing for graphical applications and a simpler experience for larger applications. So check it out. I'll leave a link down below. But what we were trying to get to was this page here. So you can see a table, and if you look for 121, you can see that is Y. So that is where the 121 comes from. Let's try it again. And this time we are going to say capital Y. And you can see we get 89. So that is right here. And it's an uppercase Y. So every character you're familiar with gets some ASCII code, and it's basically an association between a character and a number. So that is why you see the integer version here and why the code still works. So a character and an integer are kind of the same thing. It really just comes down to how we interpret that data. Do we interpret it as a character? or do we interpret it as a number? And you can actually change the way it's displayed. So if we wanted to take a number, convert it to a character and display it, we can do that. I'll show you how to do this if you wanted to store this int response as a character. So after we get the character and it's stored in that variable, you can create a new variable. Let's just call it r, just cause I don't know what else to call it. And say static underscore cast. And then inside a less than and greater than symbols, you'll say char. And then inside of parentheses, you will say response. So this is how we go from an integer and cached to a char. And that's going to be stored in a char variable. And once we have this r variable, you could actually print that instead of the int version and run. So now when we say yes, it says you entered Y. So that is just an example of static casting. You can also just do that in line if you wanted. So I could cut this here and paste it here, passing in that response. That's how you would convert it to a char. Run. I'm just going through a bunch of different examples here. I know we kind of gotten sidetracked from the original point of this video, but that will work as well but obviously it would just make more sense to use a char here. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll say, actually, let me show you one more thing. So we'll say int response. You can just define and assign that all in one. So this is the declaration and then we initialize it with some value. You could also see instead of static cast, you could just see char with parentheses like that. We'll run. 
and that will work as well. There's some minor differences between the two, so char versus static cast with char passed in. For simple examples, usually just doing this works fine, but the recommended way is to use the static cast. But enough to working around, let's go ahead and restore this to how we had it. So char response, and then we can just print response. So that is your introduction to get char, an alternative way of getting data from the user. Hopefully that was helpful. Stay tuned for the next video and be sure to subscribe. Peace out.